together. I know you are eagerly waiting for your English literature lesson. Let us start. Yes, you know, in your syllabus, there are three prescribed novels. They are The Prince and the Pauper, The Vendor of Seeds and Bringing Tony Home. So, today we are going to discuss The Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain. Lesson 1. Yes, look at the first picture. Who is that? Can you guess? That is the prince. Then look at the next picture. Who is that? Yes, he is the pauper. How did you decide? And how did you guess it? Yes, by their attire or dress. You can see the prince is wearing grand clothes, very rich clothes, but the pauper is wearing rags. So, we judge people by their clothing. That is one of the themes we discuss throughout the novel. And look at their resemblance. They look alike. Yes. This resemblance makes the story interesting. Let us see. Yes, now we are going to study about the author. Why do we study about the author? Because, yes, the writers have included most of their life experiences as well as personal experiences in their writing. So, it will be helpful you to understand the lesson thoroughly if you study about the author. Yes, Mark Twain was the pen name of Samuel Langhorne Clemens who lived between 1835 and 1910. He was born and grew up in the United States in the state of Missouri beside the river Mississippi. Samuel's father died when he was only 12 and he had to leave school to earn a living. Therefore, he had to face lots of hardships and his youthful years were full of adventure. So, you can understand most of his work you find lots of adventure. He is called as the father of American literature. Some of the popular books written by Mark Twain are The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and The Prince and the Pauper. These works demonstrate the genius of Mark Twain. The Prince and the Pauper was first published in 1881. In the story, Prince Edward Tudor and young Tom Canty exchange their clothes. Through a chance encounter, the two boys exchange roles and experience the life as the other. Now we are going to study the historical background and setting. Why is it important? Yes, it is also important. Do you know the novel is set in 16th century England? So we are not familiar with the setting. So, it is very important to study the historical background and setting. It will help you to understand the story thoroughly. Yes, the novel is set in 16th century England during the reign of King Henry VIII. He was a cruel autocratic ruler and was intolerant of religious freedom and imposed harsh and unjust punishment on his subjects. During this period, the rich lived in the lap of luxury, while the poor struggled to survive. Again, this is one of a theme in the novel. Yes, that is the difference or gap between rich and poor. The king had six queens and king's children are mentioned 
in some places of the story. Queens and Children of King Henry VIII Queen Catherine of Aragon Her daughter was Mary who came to known as Bloody Mary for her cruelty. Mary, the eldest, is mentioned by the prince as the sister who has forbidden her servant to smile. Tom Canty, in his role as the king, tells her to beg of God to give her a human heart. When the king wanted to divorce Queen Catherine, he established the Church of England for this purpose. So this is a real historical event which is included in the story. Anne Boiling She is the mother of Lady Elizabeth mentioned in the story. The queen was beheaded. In the story, Lady Elizabeth proves to be a good helper when Tom is believed to have a memory loss. In later period, Lady Elizabeth ruled the country in the name of Queen Elizabeth I. Yes, she is the Queen Elizabeth I, the famous queen. Jane Seymour, she is the mother of Prince Edward. She died at the childbirth. Then there were other three queens. Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, Catherine Parr. So in certain places of the novel, uh, the writer has mentioned uh, the name of Catherine Parr. The real historical event included in the story. Edward Tudor was born on 12th October in 1537. At the age of nine, he became the King of England as Edward VI. He died on 6 July 1553 at the age of 16. Henry VIII's breaking away from the Vatican and the Pope. Yes, that is also a real historical event. Establishment of the Church of England with himself at its head. Let's see the incidents in the novel related to this historical event. The first one is, yes, the two Baptist women who were so kind to little prince at the prison were burned alive in public. Second one, Father Andrew lived in awful court existing on a few fardies. So you can see he was driven away from his church. Number three, the mad hermit was nearly killing the prince when the boy told him he was Henry VIII's son. Yes, we go to the video clip. You can see how the mad hermit tries to kill Prince Edward. Edward of England Son of Henry the Eighth, have you prayed? Then pray now. Pray the prayer ah. of the dying. Ah. Hello? 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 Is anyone there? Oh, forgive me, Father. Have I disturbed your devotions? Not exactly, no. If I can be of service. I seek a boy who came this way. Ah. Fair, poorly dressed, yet out of the common sort. I wonder, have you seen her? Very fair. Yes. Were you able to hear how that mad hermit was sharpening his knife to kill the prince? Yes. Again, look at the words mad hermit. Again, this madness is a motif you see throughout the novel. Whipping Boy, another historical event. It is said in England certain kings had these types of whipping boys. What is the task of this whipping boy? Yes, another little boy was given the punishment 
whenever Prince Edward made a mistake in his studies. So, let us go to the video clip and see how Weeping Boy gets a punishment. She is gathering up their strong shields made a mighty troop. Of course he is gathering up the iron shields formed an impregnable square. Really, sir, your mind, I hope, is on other things. For if its full power is directed here, it bodes ill for England. Master Marlow, I give your whipping boy the strokes which you have fully earned this morning, sir. I trust when you see his pain, you will repent your inattention. Ow! Ow! Master Kerbs! Then we are going to discuss the setting. The novel's action takes place in London and the surrounding countryside. The scene continually shifts between the splendour of the royal palace and the filth of the underworld. Edward Tudor, the Prince of Wales and son of Henry VIII, lives in the palace at Westminster. Tom Canty, a beggar and the son of a drunkard, John Canty, lives in a tiny and dirty area of London called Awful Court. After exchanging roles, both face adventure throughout the novel. Now we are going to study the plot summary. Yes, so look at the two pictures. In the first picture, you can see Mother Canty and Baby Tom Canty. And in the second picture, you can see, yes, how Tom Canty uh, learned from Father Andrew. Yes, the story is about a prince. Edward and a pauper, Tom Canty, who were born on the same day in 1537. They were almost identical or look alike. Tom Canty is a member of a family which belongs to the dregs of London society in Awful Court. Encouraged by the local priest who has taught him to read and write, he aspires to have a better life. When he is loitering around the palace gate, he sees the prince accidentally. Who is this prince? Yes, he is Prince Edward, Prince of Wales. Tom is nearly caught and beaten by the royal guard at the gate. Edward stops him and invites Tom into his palace chamber. There, the two boys come to know each other's life and notice their uncanny resemblance. They exchange their clothes for a short time. But Edward leaves in a hurry before anyone sees the boys at this strange game. Yes, now in the next video clip, you can see how the two boys come to know each other's life and notice their uncanny resemblance. Let's see. Are we born in the same year then? Same year? Same minute more like. We are twins, sir. The Prince of Wales and young Tom Canty. In age at least. Nay, Tom. Clothes are no test of men. There is no virtue in silks or satins. They may be shed as easily as rags. Forgive me, sir. But it's always the rich who say that money matters little. To the poor it matters a good deal. What wouldn't I give to wear clothes like yours and read your books and live in this splendour? Is your life so wretched then? Compared to yours it is. Do you have no fun at all? We swim in the river sometimes and join in the apprentices' races. And we always go to the fairs when they're in town. And you do all that as you will. You run and swim and walk among the crowds with no guard or tutor to spoil things. What would I give for a day of such a life? <laughs> Let's play at it. Let's change clothes. Yours look clean at least. Come on. Right. <laughs> yes, have you noticed that the prince likes to have the life of Tom Canty? He likes to have such kind of freedom. Yes, let us go to the next slide. Edward snatches up an article of national importance and deposits it in a piece of decorative suit of armour and rushes out to punish the guard who has hurt Tom Canty. Now look at the picture. 
you can see how he hides that so called article of national importance inside the suit of armor. What is this article of national importance? Yes, that is the great seal of England. The guard flings out the prince, assuming him to be a pauper. Soon he is caught by Tom Canty's father and subjected to abuse and brutality as the father thinks that the prince is his son. So you can see how the real prince is caught by John Canty. Then what happened to Tom Canty? Tom left in the palace is seen as Prince Edward. He has to cope with court custom and manners as a prince. His fellow nobles and palace officials think the prince, here Tom Canty, has developed a sickness which has resulted in a memory loss due to excessive study. So, in the picture you can see Tom Canty as the prince does some blunders at the dining table. He is offering his food to his servants. This is something that a prince never does. They repeatedly ask him about the great seal, but he knows nothing about it. However, when Tom sits in judgment, the nobles and other officials reassure him to be the true prince by observing his common sense. So, in the first picture you can see the man who saved Giles Witt. So, he was accused as a criminal and back you can see two women who were accused, accused as criminal. So, again Tom Canty asked so many questions from these two and released them. So, in the second picture you can see how he releases the two women who were accused as witches. So, people said they engage in witchcraft, but after Tom Canty asked so many questions, he comes to know they are innocent. Edward, thrown into London streets in the meantime, meets Miles Hendon accidentally. He is a soldier returning from war. Miles does not believe Edward's story, but humors him thinking that he lives in a world of fantasy. Finally, he becomes his protector. So, in the picture you can see how Miles Hendon takes the real prince to his lodging and they have meals together. Meanwhile, Henry VIII, the king dies and Tom Canty is considered the next king. Edward the prince becomes aware of the stark class inequality in England as he experiences the life of a pauper. He realizes the harsh nature of the English judicial system where people are burnt at the stake, pilloried and flogged. So, in the two pictures you can see the harsh punishment given during Tudor period of England. So, in the first picture, you can see how these two Baptists were burnt alive. In the second one, you can see how Miles Hendon is put into stock and he is ill treated. He understands that most of the time the accused are convicted on flimsy evidence. He vows to reign with mercy when he regains his throne. Edward unwisely declares to a group of thieves that he is the king. They think he is mad and hold a mock coronation. Again you find the motive of madness. So, Tom Canty's family think Tom is mad. Yes. After a series of adventures, Edward interrupts the coronation where Tom is about to be crowned king. So, in the picture you can see the mock coronation. Look at the picture. Yes, what is it? That is the great seal of England. Tom 
is willing to give up the throne, but the nobles refuse to believe that Edward, the prince, who is in guise of a pauper, is the real heir to the throne. Again you can see, people judge others by their clothes. They want him to produce the great seal that he hid before leaving the palace. Tom declares that if anyone described it, he could have produced it as he had used it to crack nuts. He did not know what the great seal was, that's why he used it to crack nuts. The test of the great seal proves beyond doubt that Edward is the real king and heir. Yes, now in the video clip, you can see how Tom Canty prompts the real prince to find the great seal of England because at the moment the real prince can't remember where he kept it. Where else? That day we were together, you left the chamber hurriedly. Is it not possible that you chose a new and sudden place to hide it? Of course. There was no time to take it to the cabinet. And I put it in a suit of armor which stands beside the door. Look there, Lord Seymour. Is that the seal? That great round thing with a heavy end? That's the great seal that everyone's looking for. Aye, sir, it is. Well, it's there, all right. I found it days ago. How strange to think that all the time they asked me for the seal, I used it without knowing what it was. You used it whatever for? Why, for cracking nuts, Your Majesty. So, you can see, Tom Candy says, he used the great seal to crack nuts, so others are laughing. Edward and Tom change back to their original places. Miles Hendon is rewarded. His story forms a subplot in the novel. He is betrayed and dispossessed by his brother Hugh. With Miles, Edward has many adventures. Once Edward regains his rightful place, Miles is reinstated. He marries the woman he loves. In the first picture you can see Lady Edith. Finally he gets his lover. Tom Canty is appointed as the king's ward and returns to his mother and sister. In the second picture you can see that. So you can see the gratefulness of Prince Edward. Now we are going to discuss the characters in the novel. Edward Tudor, the Prince of Wales and Tom Canty, a pauper's son. King Henry VIII. He is the father of Edward, the Prince of Wales, and John Canty is the father of Tom Canty. Bet, Nan and Mother Canty. Bet and Nan are twin sisters of Tom Canty and Mother Canty is the mother of Tom Canty. Father Andrew, a good retired priest. Lady Jane Grey. Lady Elizabeth and Lady Mary. Lady Jane Grey is the cousin of the prince and Lady Elizabeth and Lady Mary are half-sisters to Edward. Lord Hutford and Lord St. John. They are two lords in charge of overseeing the welfare of the Prince of Wales. Miles Hendon, a good friend of Edward, the prince. Hugh Hendon. Miles brother, evil brother. So you can see his evil look in the picture. Here you go. He is a vagabond who always ill-treated the prince. So here we can see the relationship among these characters. Uh, first we go to Edward Tudor. King Henry VIII is father and the Lady Jane Grey is cousin and Lady Elizabeth and Lady Mary are half-sisters. Miles Hendon is the friend. The Lord Hartford and the Lord St. John, they are in charge of the prince. Then we'll go to Tom Canty. Yes, John Canty is the father. Mother Canty is the mother. 
Nan and Beth are sisters who are 15 years old and father Andrew, yes, he teaches Tom Latin. Then we will go to Tom Canty's family. They live in Orville Court. The Canties are extremely poor and the father forces children to beg but he cannot make them steal. So you can see the family members, Tom Canty, John Canty, father is a thief, then mother, grandmother, she is also a beggar. Beth and Nan are 15 year old twins. Edward Tudor, Prince of Wales, later he becomes the king, King Edward VI. He is the son of King Henry VIII. His strong sense of justice, fearlessness and authoritative manner are brought out at the very beginning of the story. Example, the reaction of the prince when he sees the soldier at the palace gate hurls Tom into the jeering crowd. So, you can see how he speaks to that soldier. He is understanding, kind and generous. You can see how he treats Tom Canty at the palace. He understands Tom is starving. His height breeding is seen when he orders food for hungry Tom and dismisses the servants so that Tom could eat without being embarrassed. The prince thinks of punishing unkind John Canty and Rennie. Yes, uh, let us go to the video clip. You can see how Tom Canty peeps into the palace through the gate and how he is hurled by the soldier. Is that the prince, sir? Is it truly? Where? Keep back, keep back. It might your manage, you young villain. Ah. Move it back, back, back. Now get off with you. Sentry, how dare you use the boy like that? He's just a dirty beggar, your highness. Silence. Were he my father's meanest subject, he deserves better than he has received today. Open the gates and let him in. Uh, One more word and you'll be on your way to France. Very good, Your Highness. Bring him to me. boy. I am sorry for the treatment you have received. You look tired and hungry. Come along with me and I will try to make amends. Bye. So did you notice how the prince treated this pauper? He even says sorry to him. The prince maintains his royal dignity throughout the novel. Example, Refusal of Hugo's suggestion of stealing and begging, he never does it. He is outspoken and honest. Example, when Henry was condemned to the stock and was being maltreated by the mob, the prince becomes indignant. He shouts at the crowd. The prince has great sense of appreciation, a strong affection and a deep sense of gratitude. He becomes a just and merciful ruler. So in the picture you can see, finally he appoints Tom Canty as a ward, King's ward. Then we will discuss the character of Tom Canty. He is a boy born to a pauper family. He bears a strong resemblance to Prince Edward. He is intelligent and honest. He became obsessed with royals and royal life and behavior because of teaching of Father Andrew. His intelligence, natural ability to learn and adaptability helped him to survive in the palace as a prince. He is sensitive, kind and with strong sense of right and wrong. Example, after becoming the king, Tom's first act is to give the command. What is this command? 
to the tower and say the king decrees us the duke of norfolk shall not die that is it so in the video clip you can see how he gives the command blessed be england to have a just and merciful king i have one more piece of business beware of pity my liege it can do the devil's work and stay the acts of justice. What is your wish, my lord? One I hope that will bring you joy. Lord Harford, go at once to the tower and release the Duke of Norfolk. Thanks be to God. Your Majesty, Norfolk was condemned by the late king, your father. Surely to honor King Henry's memory. My lord, Norfolk will live. My father's memory will be more honored by his reprieve than by his death. Your Majesty, listen. The crowd calls blessings on your head. Come, sire. Let me show them their wise king, and I will cheer with them for what you've done this day. When Tom participates in the traditional recognition procession and goes down the crowded street, his poor mother recognizes him. But Tom says, I do not know you, woman. The incident brought him down to earth. This is the only incident which shows a change in this flat character. What is a flat character? You know, throughout the story, this character does not change much. So, in this story also, you find lots of flat characters. Tom Canty and Prince, yes, from the beginning to the end, they are good characters. On the other hand, Tom Canty's father, John Canty, then Mad Hermit, yes, throughout the story, they are evil characters. So, those are flat characters. But here, Tom says that he can't recognize his mother. But he says that for the sake of nation. Because if foreign countries come to know that the king is mad, there might be threats for the country. That's why he says so. Mother Canty. She is the mother of Tom Canty, who loves her son truly. She is brutally harassed by her husband, John Canty. As a mother, she notices certain differences between the prince and her own son. So, you should know that is mother's instinct. What is this difference she notices? Yes, you can understand. Tom Canty is timid and not brave, but you can see from the beginning, the prince is very brave, outspoken, tells the truth, okay, yes. So, she notices this difference. So, this is what she thinks. As she lay thinking and mourning the suggestion began to creep into her mind that there was an undefinable something about this boy that was lacking in Tom Canty, mad or sane. She could not describe it and her yet her sharp mother instinct seemed to detect it and perceive it. Then Miles Hendon, in the story, he is the rescuer and protector of the little prince who was mistaken for a pauper. He came from noble family but had been deprived of his position and property by his younger brother Hugh. He is honest, brave, strong and extremely kind-hearted, good-humoured man with fine noble qualities. Again, you can't judge this person by his clothes. He is also wearing rags. Although his lodgings are cheap and poor, his qualities are noble and great. He makes the great sacrifice of taking Prince Edward's punishment on himself. But later, he gets back his property, position and the lover. Later, he becomes a peer of England, the Earl of Kent, Henry VIII. In the story, the king is in his old age of his life. His cruelty is seen is in his laws and the horrible punishments given to the public. 
example it is said yes the extent of the king's wickedness can be seen in the fact that his london bridge was ornamented with the heads of prominent people who had been beheaded but he has a soft corner for his only son edward tudor who was treated with so much love and indulgence john canty he is the father of tom canty and an uneducated wicked ruffian a thief and later a murderer he wants his children to become beggars and thieves he enjoys in torturing and inhumanly beating up his own children father andrew father andrew is a kind all praise who henry 8 had driven out of his home with a pension of a few farthings a month therefore he lives at the awful court he teaches tom and some other children to read write and behave correctly now in the picture you can see father andrew father andrew's teaching helps tom to survive and play the role of prince in the palace then mad hermit He lives in a forest and calls himself as Archangel. He declares he should have been the Pope if Henry VIII had not formed a new church of his own. When the prince says that he is the son of King Henry VIII, he decides to kill the prince as a revenge. Humphrey Marlowe He is a 12-year-old little boy who is Prince Edward's whipping boy. When the prince does not do his studies properly his whipping boy is punished on behalf of the prince he is paid for this and it helps himself and his sisters to survive so once he says my back is my bread if it go idle i starve tom made humphrey marlo hereditary grand whipping boy to the royal house of england then the tramps or vagabonds in the story there is a large mixed gang of gutter scum and ruffians of both sexes this gang includes thieves beggars criminals old women girls babies those left crippled by inhuman punishment and those who had lost everything due to the cruel laws of the time they are the uneducated poverty stricken majority of the contemporary england so you can see in the picture the vagabonds and there you can see john canty in the front now we have reached the end of today's lesson so you have a task so let's summarize what we did today first we discuss about the author then historical background and setting then the character we discuss about the plot summary yes now from the next lesson we are going to discuss the chapters that is chapter analysis so get ready for that you have to read the book and you have to keep the book with you So it's time for me to say goodbye hope you have enjoyed this lesson so hope to meet you with another interesting lesson goodbye